Hey everyone, and welcome to Tony for You. Digital Devil Saga is a fantastic spin off duology of the Shin Megami Tensei series. They set themselves apart from the others in that you don't recruit demons to fight on your behalf. In this game, you are the demons. The specific demons the party turns into, however, have their own fair share of lore and significance to the plot, more than you might first think. My first time around, I didn't give much thought as to the demons or Atma avatars at all, and I bet many others didn't either. We all know and love the party members of Digital Devil Saga, but we don't know much about their demonic representation. Let's change that now by diving into the lore, relation to the character, and design of these hand-picked Atma avatars, representing the party members we share an adventure with. A special guest is covering their personal favorite character as well, so stay tuned and spoilers ahead. Surf, the Silver Fox. His Atma avatar is Varuna, with the Atma brand of the Water Crown. Varuna is a Vedic deity, meaning he originates from the Vedas, ancient Sanskrit texts holding some of the oldest scriptures of Hinduism. Varuna is the god of sky, water, and the celestial ocean. He's one of the most prominent Ashura, a race distinctly different from the Devas. For context, in Hinduism there are two races of celestial beings, the Devas and the Ashuras. The pantheistic system established from the late Vedic period tells us that the Devas became subordinate to the Supreme Being. Who the Supreme Being is is difficult to say. Some say Brahman, while others say the concept of God varies between the traditions. Regardless, the Devas are advanced godlike beings known for their intelligence, piety, and direct contact with the beings outside of our realm. Ashuras, on the other hand, while still divine beings, are more concerned with the physical world and advancing materially. That is not to say Devas are good and Ashuras are bad. Many Ashuras, in fact, are charitable and kind, such as Varuna. For simplicity's sake, we can say Devas are concerned with spirituality and enlightenment, while Ashuras are concerned with physical well-being and day-to-day -day life. In pre-Vedic times, Varuna was said to be omniscient and omnipotent, even attributing him as the keeper of Rita, the cosmic force that holds the laws of the universe together. Varuna's name means he who covers, which possibly refers to his omnipotence, the sky, or his ability to hold together the fabric of reality. During Vedic times, however, Varuna's position as king of gods was usurped by Indra, god of war, due to him taking back all the waters of the universe from Vritra, Vritra being a name you'll hear again soon. Varuna was demoted to god of oceans and rivers, quite the step down from the king of gods but still a position worthy of veneration nonetheless. Surf in the game is an interesting character, not so much for his stoic leadership but for his relationship with the real world. Surf Sheffield in reality is revealed to be a manipulator, acting kind and supportive to Sarah while experimenting on her but in reality knowing full well the risks it poses to her young body. Surf uses people for his own ends and is willing to sacrifice anything in pursuit of power in the God Project. When the characters were transferred to the digital world, however, they were interpretations of the characters through the psyche of Sarah in the real world. So in Surf's case, only the qualities he wanted Sarah to see were transferred. Digital Surf is a great leader, logical in his decision making and strong of character. While not as cutthroat and powerful as the real Surf, his ability to achieve his goals alongside those he cares for is laudable. Ashuras are beings more concerned with worldly desires, and so his position as supreme god was never meant to be, mirroring the fall Varuna had from Vedic to post-Vedic texts. Some would say he could be much more successful in his diminished position than he ever could be vying for supremacy, as even at his peak, Varuna's prominence could not match up to Indra, true king of gods. Varuna's design is a blue demon with white shell or fin looking plates on his head and shoulders, alluding to his godhood of the sea, along with his Atma brand being a tidal wave. He wields retractable mantis blades as weapons from his hands. An extremely fitting and deep design for the mostly silent main character. Heat has the avatar Agni with the Atma brand of a fireball. Now Agni, if it wasn't made obvious enough by the game, is a Hindu god of fire. I mean, the name Agni is literally Sanskrit for fire, so it's only appropriate that he be the avatar of a character named Heat, who has red hair and is also voiced by Crispin Freeman, who also voices Firefly in Batman Arkham Asylum, but getting back on topic, Agni is commonly associated with the sun, comets, lightning, and sacrifice, and is the second most prominent member of the Vedic gods, only behind Indra, and like most of the Vedic gods, became an important god in Hinduism later on. Agni's role is to function as that of an organizer and a messenger. He is responsible for delivering sacrificial offerings to the other gods in heaven, which he does by consuming them and presenting them in the form of smoke. And he's also said to be responsible for transmitting the gifts of the gods to humans. Now, in Digital Devil Saga, he is a very hot-headed, no pun intended, idealistic member of the party who is also very quick-tempered. 
He believes that he is the strongest of the entire cast, and for that reason, he is entitled to everyone's respect, even though he doesn't really do much to earn it. And he also thinks everyone else is weak for being unwilling to devour their friends and enemies at every opportunity like he does. Oddly enough, the human that he's based on has a similar irritable personality, but is much more caring and is very opposed to the treatment that Surf was subjecting Sarah to. Now, Heat's avatar being Agni likely has less to do with his temperament and more to do with his insatiable appetite. Agni is said to be responsible for burning the food in people's stomachs, and it's also believed that he was cursed by Brigu to become the devourer of everything. His idealistic worldview likely has to do with Agni's association with sacrifice, which, oddly enough, sacrifice is actually what his human counterpart was opposed to. Agni is also depicted as being red and having two heads, which, you know, I think speaks for itself, as well as the fact that he specializes in fire attacks. Either way, Heat's base avatar is a very creative design and very fitting for his character. Now, in Digital Devil Saga 2, Heat is fought toward the end of the game as Vritra, one of the strongest of the Asuras, who is the personification of Drought, and even keeps the rivers to himself. There doesn't seem to be much inspiration from the original source material as to why Heat turns to Vritra, in fact it's barely explained at all in the game, but most stories depict Vritra with his arch nemesis being Indra, who is also responsible for killing him in most accounts. Now, Indra is the avatar of Roland, who effectively replaces Heat in Digital Devil Saga 2, and no matter what the player does, it's impossible to have both of them in the party at the same time at the end of the game. And Vritra is also weak against electricity, which is what Indra specializes in. Either way, the fight against Vritra is going to give you a run for your money. Argilla, the soft-hearted sniper. Her Atma avatar is Prithvi, with the Atma brand of the Seismic Wave. Prithvi was an ancient Vedic goddess of fertility and was prominent in the creation myth of the universe. Prithvi, whose name means the vast one, is the Sanskrit name for the earth and the sustainer of humanity as the literal mother nature. The most relevant story regarding Prithvi is her interactions with Prithu, the god of preservation and abundance. These names are going to get difficult. In Hindu myth, Prithu was crowned the earthly king and the people were suffering from a horrible famine after the death of the previous king. Prithu wished to kill Prithvi and steal her fruits for his people. Why he thought killing Mother Nature was a good idea, I'm not sure. Prithvi refused to yield the whole of the earth to men, which enraged Prithu, seeing it as disobedience and shot an arrow at her. Prithvi, understandably scared for her life, ran away after turning into a cow and found herself at the home of Brahma, the creator of the universe. She beseeched him to help her, but Brahma refused, instead suggesting that she accept Prithu as her husband and be obedient to him. A suggestion from the creator of the universe, despite how unreasonable, is not easily cast aside. So she went back to Prithu and became his loyal wife, forced to provide for humanity for the rest of time. Prithu told Prithvi he would be her guardian, but she would be completely subservient to mankind now, and milked to feed humanity and the other gods whenever it was necessary. Yes, milked like a cow. Argilla is perhaps the character with the most difficulty adapting to her surroundings. In the beginning, she refused to devour any other beings to become stronger. This is a common trend with her as she refuses to give up moral behavior. Over time though, she realizes she can't solve anything by slowly starving herself, and sinks lower in hopes to find answers. Always against combat, she's powerless to stop anything and sees the death of many, including Jinana, a character she had a particular affinity to, and grows more and more disillusioned with the circumstances of their life. When she arrives in Nirvana, she fights tooth and nail against the society's forces, but in the end, she knew the most good she could do was sacrificing herself to save many others' lives, after so much time of sinking further and further into depravity. As a human, Argilla was a nurse working in the Karma Society's God Project, closely with Surf. She was one of the many victims of his manipulation, as she spied on heat for him, and ultimately ended up sacrificing herself to save his life, though, in the end, never really meaning anything to him. Much like Prithvi, Argilla was a victim of the power-hungry men around her, ultimately leading to her subjugation. Though in her real life she amounted to very little, digital Argilla was selfless and kind. Her sacrifice with Roland led to the world being saved. Prithvi's design is a brown and black spotted humanoid demon with red hands that extend to spiked tentacles. Her head is pointed with no face and she has two mouths where her chest should be. Prithvi's earth-toned design along with her using earth spells are an obvious nod to her being Mother Earth herself, but definitely don't think you can milk her. A tragic avatar for an equally tragic character. Cielo, the airborne trickster. His Atma avatar is Diaus, with the Atma brand of the Rainbow Arc. 
Dios was one of the oldest Vedic gods whose name translates to Sky Father. His consort was Prithvi, the earth goddess, and together they were the archetypes of mother and father. Together they gave life to many gods, including Indra and Agni. Very little is known about the exploits of Dios, aside from him being the father of many gods. The only definite aspect we know of him is his paternal role to his children. Despite this, one thing we do know for sure is that he had non-consensual relations with his daughter, which is explicitly stated in the Rig Veda. Oh boy. We also know he was destined to be killed by one of his sons, and this prophecy was fulfilled by Indra, who pulled him by his foot out of the sky where he fell to his death. I can only assume this was because of his past crimes. Depictions of him are scarce, but Dios is often described as like a black stallion studded with pearls in a simile with the night sky, and sometimes as a roaring bull who fertilizes the earth. Cielo is very much not like the previously mentioned sky god in regards to his sexual proclivities, but he does exhibit a paternal instinct. After receiving orders to watch over Sarah, he is incredibly protective of her. Sarah also saved his life after calming Gale down when he lost control. Cielo was tasked with protecting her again, but he failed when Sarah was kidnapped by rival forces and he was left alive. This event was the catalyst that triggered his emotional awakening. He escaped the prison and rejoined the main group with vital information. After ascending to Nirvana, Cielo realized that in life he was a cyber shaman candidate much like Sarah, but he ended up being just another casualty of the experiments. In his final moments alive, he sacrifices himself to make sure Surf and Sarah make it to their final destination by shooting down pursuing planes. A much more kind-hearted figure than his godly counterpart, but definitely exhibiting fatherly qualities. Dios's design is that of a blue-winged humanoid with sharp, plane-like wings. His head is pointed with a crest, used to strike enemies. His waist and wings have a colorful rainbow-like pattern, much like his Atma brand of the rainbow arc. A simple avatar choice with the god of the sky for a flying character, but a very fitting fatherly role. Gale, the robotic reaper. His Atma avatar is Veyu, with the Atma brand of a twister. Veyu, or sometimes referred to as Vata, is a primary deity of winds and air in Hindu mythology. He is chief of the five deities of life, with his role among them being breathing, the most mechanical and automated part of our bodies, aside from maybe blinking. In human form, Veyu is described as having exceptional beauty and moves in his shining coach driven by anywhere between 2, 49, or 1,000 white and purple horses. One of the most famous stories regarding Veyu can be found in the Upanishads, late Vedic Sanskrit texts regarding Hindu philosophy. There once was a time where the gods who controlled bodily functions engaged in a contest to decide who among them was the greatest. One at a time they would leave a man's body, starting with sight. The man was blinded but otherwise still alive and functioning normally. The rest of the deities left the man's body and time and time again the body lived on whether it be sight, hearing, taste, or touch. When it came time for Veyu to leave the man's body however, the other deities felt themselves pulled out of the man as well with force just as a powerful horse yanks off pegs in the ground to which he is bound. The other deities understood this to mean they were empowered by Veyu and can be overpowered by him in turn. Some small stories tell us that Veyu was the only deity not afflicted by demons of sin, and in order to know Brahman, the divine creator, one must know Veyu. The deity of breath plays an incredibly important role in the Hindu pantheon, as the importance of meditation and breathing techniques is deeply tied to the philosophy. Despite this, he is portrayed in line with the other atmospheric deities as a fighter and destroyer. Gale is a character deeply tied to the story, and perhaps the most important member of the team, aside from Surf and Sarah. He is a calm and calculated strategist, and devises plans to move forward with the most logical decision making. Gale has no problem allying himself with groups or betraying them later to get ahead, as he is in a constant state of self-preservational logic. While the others in the group lack complex emotions at first to a degree, Gale is unique in his complete repression of any emotion and constant, almost trance-like state. He only awakens to his emotions when Lupa passes away. Lupa tells Gale to look for a child holding an olive leaf and tell him to be an honorable man. Filled with anger, he curses their enemy, Angel, for giving them the powers that led to so much suffering. Eventually, Gale is revealed to have been a man named David in life, who was Jenna Angel's lover. He sadly passed away, but not before telling Angel to continue with her research. Seeing the destruction she caused, Gale speaks to her as David and explains that she is misguided and he wanted her to help people. Without David's guidance, Angel went astray and, unable to bear the truth, stabs him. Upon which he stabs her in the back and they both die among the chaos. 
A poetic end to the couple, as without David, Angel could not live a full life. David was the breath of morality to guide her, and without him, she was doomed to cause suffering and death. Veyu's design is a humanoid with green wing-like appendages covering his body like a poncho. His head is a giant mouth with serrated teeth, and his feet have retractable blades he uses to slash enemies with. A great choice for the calm strategist, invaluable to the party. Sarah, the somber singer. Her Atma avatar is Varnani, with the Atma brand also of the Water Crown. Varnani, also known as Varuni, was the consort of Varuna, surprise surprise. She is the Hindu goddess of wine, liquor, and the golden nectar. In some stories, this goddess refers to multiple women, Varuni, Varunani, and Yaldevi, who rose during the churning of the ocean and chose Varuna as her consort, rather than being courted by him. The golden nectar in her domain represents Amrita, a Sanskrit word meaning immortality, and also referred to as elixir or soma. It's the favored drink of the spiritually advanced devas. Despite the name meaning immortality, the drink does not bestow immortality to those who imbibe it. Rather, it allows one to achieve higher levels of knowledge and power dormant within the bodies of the devas. Due to her being the goddess of this drink bestowing wisdom, her alternate name Varnani is an anagram of Nirvana, and ultimate personification of the path to attaining enlightenment. Sarah, from the moment she is introduced in the story, plays an incredibly important role. Her singing calms the fierce hunger that can consume those branded. Aside from this song, however, she remembers nothing. To all in the junkyard, Sarah is key to reaching Nirvana, but she wishes to stay by Surf's side. Ultimately, Sarah is taken by Jenna Angel and the Karma Society after the events of the first game, upon which Surf and his group desperately try to get her back. Chasing her all the way to their base, she is retrieved, but Heat appears, mortally wounding Surf. In her grief, she screams so loud her powers awaken and she sends corrupted data to the sun, causing it to destroy the earth in less than a day and she passes out. Upon waking up, she is distraught by the events that she caused, but Argilla convinces her to continue fighting, which allows her to inherit the water crown previously used by Surf. Over time, it was revealed that she was a test subject in the horrific God Project, overseen by the real Surf and her own mother, Jenna Angel. The Surf whom she loves and trusts is nothing but the idealized version of him the real Surf wanted her to believe. In the battle with the horribly deformed Heat, Surf's body is rematerialized within the egg chamber. In order to save the Earth, they must transfer their data to the Sun, and in doing so, they embrace each other and fuse together, which is an incredibly meaningful act to be explored more in the Seraph section. Sarah is the key to Nirvana, and to enlightenment. Portrayed as the being most important to the story, as the Cyber Shaman, and the one who has the power to convey their feelings of humanity's worth to God. She rises above the horror and betrayal forced upon her in the God Project at the hands of her friends and mother and with true wisdom, conveys the worth of humanity. Varnani's design is extremely similar to Varuna's, with the same shell-like armor and retractable blades, though she's colored pink and has a more spread crown. A beautiful pick for the tragic second hero of the game. Roland, the dutiful guardian. His Atma avatar is Indra, with the Atma brand of a lightning bolt. Indra is the ancient Vedic Hindu god of war, lightning, storms, rains, and river flows. He is the most referred deity in the Rig Veda, and is celebrated for his powers. Indra is a king of the gods, and has many roles, mainly as a bringer of rain and god of the thunderbolt. His feats of strength are almost too many to recount. He's a warrior of renown, and conqueror of all Ashuras. Most famously, he defeated the dragon Vritra, who led his own band of Dasas, the Sanskrit word for enemy and servant. Accused of hoarding rain and water, his servants stealing cows, and even hiding the sun, Needless to say, Indra made quick work of him, and as an offering from the priests, he was given Soma, the elixir of immortality. Indra's main weapon is the Vajra, which is a symbol in many later religions such as Buddhism and Zoroastrianism. From his description in the Pantheon, he can be likened to a Zeus or Odin-like figure with his power of the storms and being the supreme leader of the gods. Indra's depiction in Buddhism specifically is important, as he is the ruler of the Deva's realm of rebirth within the Samsara. His exact role within the realm is unknown for certain, as it changes based on belief system. Indra is sometimes depicted as a mere figurehead, and one who suffers rebirth, the implication being it's an unwilling act. In the religion of Jainism, Indra is not the ruler of the gods, but rather the god of the superhumans and plays a key role in the rebirth cosmology. 
Roland is initially introduced as a freedom fighter, calmly explaining the circumstances of the Ashura project, and the nature of the main party merely being AIs created by the Cyber Shaman to create elite super soldiers. He tries to coerce the party into infiltrating the society through less than honorable means, but when pushed, he makes the ultimate sacrifice. Roland becomes a demon and fights alongside the party. His role as leader of the Lokapala is merely that of a figurehead, as he only received the title after fleeing a botched mission. In these regards, Roland is more akin to the Jane depiction, being a superhuman figurehead yet still holding immense power. Though he isn't exactly the godlike figure Indra was in lore, Roland's personality becomes one of the most courageous in the entire narrative, as he and Argilla sacrifice themselves to facilitate the rest of the party's escape from Meganada. Indra's design is that of a dark red demon spotted with diamond patterns and armored shell. He has a halo surrounding what's left of his hollowed out skull, and his weapon is an enormous Vajra, true to his lore. An interesting spin on the supreme deity. Finally, Seraph, the body bearing two souls. Their Atma avatar is Arda, with the Atma brand of the Clarion. Arda, or Arda Narishvara, fittingly enough, is translated to Lord who is half woman. Being male on one side and female on the other, with the male side holding aspects of Shiva and the female side holding aspects of Parvati, his wife. Throughout history, the union between the masculine and the feminine was inseparable to a sort of divinity and wholeness. Whether it be the Greek god Hermaphroditus bearing the soul of a man and a woman, to more modern Christianity representing the union of marriage as the unification of a man and a woman becoming one as both natures are integral to life itself. For Hindu gods, it is no different. One side is Parvati, goddess of fertility, love, and beauty, while the other is Shiva, god of time, art, dance, but also the destroyer. That is not to say these aspects are opposed, quite the opposite in fact. They come together and complement each other to create a supreme being. Arda represents the unity between the masculine passive force, or Purushu, and the feminine active force, or Prakriti. These energies are constantly drawn to each other, but separated by the intervening axis. As for the Atma brand, the Clarion is literally a narrow-tubed trumpet, but that isn't what's on Seraph's head. Clarion is also used as a phrase meaning to give a strongly expressed demand or request for action. What the symbol on Seraph's head really displays is the masculine and feminine energies coming together in unity in a Clarion call, in this case, to God, beseeching for humanity to be spared. Through the display of the male and female spirit becoming one and achieving enlightenment, humanity has proved worthy of its existence. The design of Arda is that of a winged demon carrying aspects of every member of the Embryon tribe that fell before ascension, with the wings of Cielo, color of heat, bladed protrusions of gale, and more. Seraph themselves is obviously a mixture of Sarah and Surf, holding the masculine right side of Surf and the feminine left side of Sarah, the same masculine and feminine sides as the real Arda. This has to be one of the most impactful character transformations in the entire series. That was the Atma Avatars Explained. Let me know your favorite Embryon members in the comments down below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Mine has to be Seraph. They had such interesting aspects to research, spanning many world religions. Special thanks to Nyarli for doing the Heat segment. His channel will be linked in the pinned comment down below. And thanks Anton, Big T, Frankie Stone, Jim Taylor, Just a Middleman, Konyuna, Matt M, Mega X454, Mr. Eight Eyes, The Toaster Messiah, Video Gamer 75, and many more for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this lore deep dive on Hindu gods and the Embryon members, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.